Alright, I assume this is recording. Hey. Uh. You know, this is another Nick Bait production. On the date of September 1st, 1991, a young man, future lolcow and fecal matter enthusiast by the name of Nicholas Boyd Starzenberger was born. Like most kids born into working class families, his parents hoped they could give him a good start so that he could find his place in the world and become a good, honest citizen, and chase his dreams using everything they had given him. All he needed to do was make the most of the opportunities given to him and reach for the stars. Fast forward to the 20th of January 2016, where he was charged with the molestation of a minor under the age of 10, and you can probably see that he was not willing to reach for the stars. The story of Nick Bate is fucking insanity at pretty much every turn. And he is the perfect example of the kind of person parents hope their kids never morph into. Now I'm fully aware that you may not be aware of this man, and I'm absolutely not holding that against you. Because even me, someone who's a bit of a lol cow connoisseur at the best of times, had never heard of this guy until I watched a documentary about him that's better than any video I could ever make. Link in the description. Nick started out as a relatively normal kid whose time online was mostly spent gravitating towards his favourite fan sites and forums, which isn't really too dissimilar to most kids online these days. As he got older, however, his online footprint began to grow. Nick's reputation would become more and more noticeable as he would spend time online preaching the virtues of things like anal sex, poo, and pedophilia. Because of this, he became the focal point of many different lolcow boards and gossip websites due to his hatred of vaginas and his awful personal hygiene. As well as getting his own Encyclopedia Dramatica page, he would become the talk of the town in many internet circles. Thus, the mythos of Nick Bate was born. Today, however, I just want to look at one specific aspect of Nick's internet output, as during all the trolling and all the deranged posts, all of the Nick hate, as he called it, he still had time to do one thing I never expected, and that was releasing a full demo of awful, awful songs. Songs about things he wishes he could do, things that he was going to do, and in the worst case scenario, songs about things that he had already done. With titles like Anal Rape and I Want to Rape Children, what could go wrong? If I was to describe to you the list of tracks, I'd say that these don't really feel like full songs in the traditional sense, because they're all about the length of an interlude, and they all sound like they're improvised. I mean, seriously, this whole demo just feels odd. Firstly, usually demos only have a small handful of songs to give the listener a taste of the artist's capabilities. But this album has 19 fucking songs on it. Despite the 19 song track list, however, it takes less than 6 minutes to listen to all of them, which is, in a lot of ways, the best thing about this album. I've heard people call this list of tracks stuff like atonal, dissonant, lethargic, and there's really no way you can argue with that technically, but what's funny to me is how I can guarantee Nick doesn't know what any of those things are, and these technical elements are not there by design, but instead by accident. Nick is such a terrible musician that most of these songs feel like, at the very least, a first draft, if not whatever just came into his mind at the time. And let's just say, he can't play any musical instruments very well to begin with, so he spends most of his time just noodling. 
The problem is that to make noodling sound good, you actually need to be aware of how the music instrument you're playing works and what you need to do in order to produce a satisfying sound. Nick not only doesn't seem to know how to do any of that, but he doesn't even seem to know how to tune the guitar he's playing either. So now that we know the man behind the music, and we're going to have a good idea as to what the music is going to entail, let's take a look at our first song, titled, I'm Gonna Do My Wife. Titled, I'm Gonna Do My Wife. Sound check, sound check, sound check, sound check, sound check, sound check, sound check. Doing another sound check, baby, tonight. Alright, we should be good to go. I'm gonna do my wife and also some children in their butts. But the latter is only if my wife says I can, which she probably won't. So I guess I'll just do my wife. Didn't that just give you chills? It doesn't get much better from here, folks. The incoherent guitar strumming and Nick's strangely monotone voice compared with the tinny audio quality makes the whole album sound really unnerving. But one thing you might be wondering is why Nick keeps mentioning his wife. We'll get into that later, but for now, we'll simply move on to the next song. That one was simply there so you could get a feel for the kind of ride we're going to be having today. Something I really like about this album, and I won't be saying something like that very often here, I'm going to say a lot of negative things about this album in this video, but one thing I like is how short the songs are, because number one, you don't have to experience it for as long as you would have if these songs were full length, but two, they're so short I can play them to you in their entirety so that there's no context missing when I make my statement after the song is played. Haha, <laughs> my job is fucking easy. Damn, dude. Anal rape. Anal rape. children, then disemboweling and force feeding them their own intestines. Damn, son. Children are a topic Nick engages with a lot on this album, but that's because the topic also is synonymous with his real life, as Nick was a well-known pedophile sympathizer who would use online forums to argue for why pedophilia should be legal. But there is... There is Okay. Well, ex okay, but you're proving my point. The pedophilia should not be illegal. It should. Because it is, it yet is another illegal. One. It is. Yeah, I know. People but get that's... prosecuted for it. They get thrown in jail for that's it. That's what I'm. That is what I'm saying, though. It's a stupid law. Claiming that pedophilia is actually a sexuality, thus it must be respected. Hearing sick Nick sing about what he hopes to do with actual kids in the song, though actually, like, creeps me the fuck out, honestly. Picked up on one very specific aspect of Nick, that being that he absolutely loves the chocolate starfish. That's right, he's an ass man in the worst possible way. Nick vehemently despises vaginas, and I've never really been able to understand why. I think he thinks they're gross, and it does say something about him hating pussy because uh, it opens up as a girl gets older on his Encyclopedia Dramatica. Uh, I guess that's why he likes him young, I suppose. Not only does he like butts, but he is a coprophiliac too, so he loves the shit that comes out of him just as much as he does the butt itself. Nick has been known to masturbate in his own shit, and at one point, he was living in an apartment that he'd turned into a metaphorical poo cave due to his propensity to rub his own shit and cum all over the walls. Fuck, that's fucking, that's foul. I'm gonna lick 
the anus savannah. Uh, gonna stick it in Anna's butt. Gonna do it in Anna's butt. Yeah, I'm gonna lick Anna's butt. Insert my penis into Anna's butt. Butts, butts, butts! This song refers to a girl by the name of Anna, that being a girl that Nick believed was his wife. She indeed is a real person, specifically an online girlfriend Nick once had during his time in the final stage fan forums. He effectively used the chats between them as a depository for his degenerate fetishes, and while they talked for a long time, she would begin to get uncomfortable with him and began blocking him for longer and longer periods of time, before finally giving him the boot and cutting all communications. Despite this, Nick had become fully convinced that they were meant to be together, leading to him trying to contact her. Ironically, it would be her and her close friends that would be the catalyst for his explosion in the lolcow scene, as they would begin to leak chat logs, images, and recordings of him to the Christian forums, effectively using the infamy of a bigger lolcow to get his name out into the wider internet. This Everybody's pooping except for you. Every day is like feces without you. Wow, no, this is just... I like sex, but only in the butt and mouth. Preferably in that order. Dude, that was... I completely forget how to do that song. I like sex, but only in the butt and mouth. Preferably in that order. Damn, no, I can't... Just... Damn. Yeah, my name is Nick, and my mind is sick, and unfortunately, I have a tiny dick. My wife named Anna is kind of a prick, but her ass a lick, and I'm gonna stick my penis in her anus. I'm gonna stick my cock with up her ass. It's gonna feel real good, it's gonna be a gas. Don't stare at the clock, we've got time to pass, but fucking in the hood, gonna make it last. This whole album disgusts me, but I'm still man enough to admit that this track did make me laugh. But fucking in the hood is a brief but kind of humorous rap number where Nick gets his Macklemore on and busts down some straight fire bars about the same shit we've heard in the previous tracks. It's probably the best song on the album for its comedy value, and also because it's the only song here that doesn't have that fucking dog shit guitar strumming in the background. As the last track on the list, it's the way that we end off listening to this terrible album but it's definitely not the end of this video. As mentioned at the top of this video, Nick was arrested after he was accused of raping his half-sister, who was at the time under the age of 10. Despite Nick initially seeming really worried about the accusation, this didn't deter him from revealing and oversharing about every aspect of his life. Like he had been doing for years on end at that point, Nick had the same issue that ties all lol cows together, that being an inane impulse to overshare. The situation would cause a massive rupture throughout the entirety of the lol cow community, who wanted to see Nick burn for his crimes. But even during this horrific time for Nick's family and friends, he still managed to make a fucking fool of himself. At one point, he sent a video of himself masturbating with his own feces to a female detective. As he, believed this would, as he believed this would somehow exonerate him of any wrongdoing. Luckily for his half-sister and the internet as a whole, Nick was put away for a long time and would not stink up any online forums for a long time to come. I don't find this album shocking because of its content. In a way, a lot of it feels almost quaint, like a teenager trying to be edgy and not really nailing it. The reason I find this album so shocking is because in a way, it was created from the darkest depths of Nick's creativity. Despite being so incompetent, this album genuinely gives us a look into the mind of someone who was 
and still is capable of doing really bad things, to quench his real desires, being so flippant about his interests and feelings, using the creative music to give us a taste of what Nick Bait is really about, is scary to me. Personally exploring one's psyche isn't anything new, especially in the realm of music. Artists like Roger Waters, Marvin Gaye and Johnny Cash, amongst many more, have all used their outlet of choice to explore their own lives, experiences and feelings, and have gone on to create some of the most artistically creative pieces of all time. But in the case of Nick Bait, sometimes, when you look into someone else's head, you might not like what you find.